rusty components of Nigeria's old refinery are removed to be replaced with new ones. It's the biggest repair project at this sprawling 56-year-old facility. We are looking at being able to operate this refinery as at least minimum of 90% of this install capacity. We will really have some freedom and have some reduction in the importation of these products that uh, we are doing today. For decades, the country's four refineries were allowed to rot as it imports refined products under a subsidy regime that last year cost Nigeria nearly $4 billion, despite having the largest crude oil reserves in Africa. After turning this plant around, it's expected to meet only a third of domestic requirements of refined petroleum products. Two of the refineries are located here in Port Harcourt, but even at full capacity, they can only process 210,000 barrels of oil per day. So to make up for the shortfall, the Nigerian government has bought shares in a private facility owned by Africa's richest man, Ali Kodangote, which is due to come on stream next year. Head of Nigeria's oil company says reviving the facilities was overdue as the subsidy program becomes increasingly costly. The combination of our own ability and capacity and also that of the Dangote River will bring, make Nigeria a net exporter of uh, uh, petroleum uh, pr products. Uh, we didn't stop at this. You know, there are a number of other small interventions that we are doing. Small modular refineries of 10 to 20,000 uh, barrels per day. Officials say putting the refineries to work will help conserve foreign exchange, currently being spent on importing products that Nigeria can refine with good management. Nigeria's old refineries may be on the path to revival after so many years, but only after hundreds of billions of dollars are lost to corrupt officials and government indecision. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Port Harcourt, Nigeria.